Hey there, and welcome to this new series called What Do You Use For? This is going to be a look at what we use for different grades, different subjects, different areas in our homeschool. Now, be warned, this is not a prescriptive list of what you should be using. This is just what we use, and I hope that you'll take it as that. Another option for something that you could do or what your homeschool day might look like if your kiddo is in this spot in their learning journey. Um, I'm going to use grades for this. I know some of us are not happy about that, or maybe we use a different way of um, kind of measuring our kids' progress. But for us, that might be helpful because a lot of curriculum, a lot of activities, a lot of websites are all based on grades. So if you hear me referencing that, for example, today we're going to look at fourth grade. That's what I mean. This is typically um, eight, nine, 10 year olds around there. Um, but maybe they're younger, maybe they're a little bit older. You go and do what you need to do for your kiddo, but I'm going to share what our fourth graders happen to do so far. We've had two kids go through fourth grade, and I would love to share what we do. So without further ado, let's get started. I am so glad you guys are here. My name is Melissa. I'm a homeschooling mom of four, an online teacher. I love sharing about productivity and homeschooling and teaching here on YouTube. And today we're going to look at fourth grade in our homeschool. Now, our fourth graders actually start kind of the night before. Here's what I mean. Around this age, they start to develop a little bit more awareness about what their schedule looks like. And we're developing those executive functions of like, I'm going to do this, I need to do this, but I really want to do this, so I need to plan ahead for it. You know what I mean? So if a fourth grader is like, hey, I want to have more time to go do something tomorrow, versus doing a lot of school stuff, I'm going to get some of it done the night before. This is why fourth grade kind of starts the night before and of their own choosing. We don't force them to do this. So here's the idea. Our fourth graders love taking their math books. We use Horizons from Alpha and Omega Publishing, um, and they work through, uh, they have two pages to do every day. They work through a few, usually they get about half of their activities done. Um, so about a whole page they get done. We'll check it for them usually in the morning. So often there's something to go back and redo, but the idea is there that they're already getting ahead. Our kids also wake up around 6.30 in the morning and they get straight to work. They take their oatmeal, which I have prepared the day before and left in the fridge. They add a little splash of milk, put it in the microwave, eat while they're working on their math. As they're finishing the, those two pages of Horizons, they also know the other things that are on their kind of independent work list. This is what I mean by that. They need to get, I'm going to make sure I don't miss anything, all right? They need to get their writing done. Each day, depending on their grade level, they need to do writing. They are writing the amount of sentences of their grade. Fourth graders are going to write four sentences. You guessed it. They write those sentences about whatever they want, really. Sometimes we get into a rut and we're only writing about you know, a trip that we took or a friend that we have or an activity that they did. And I'm like, come on, we're using the same words over and over again. Let's try this. And sometimes they'll ask me, hey, mom, what could I write about? Can you give me a question? Can you give me a prompt? And I love sharing those prompts. So if you have not checked out my store, I created a whole thing based on this uh, very part of our homeschool. Um, those writing prompt journals are really fun and they make it so that you don't have to think through what you want to tell your kids every day. It's just an open and go thing. So our kids do those four sentences in English for fourth grade, and then they translate to Spanish. We are a bilingual homeschool. So I mentioned them doing math. They actually do math mostly with my husband because husband, I'm up here where I am filming this teaching. I teach until about 8.30 in the morning. So they've got those two hours to eat, get dressed, brush their teeth, finish math and start their writing. So they're writing in English and Spanish. They translate themselves. That way we're doing some indirect grammar, some indirect, um, you know, spelling skills. Um, and obviously I will check that over with them. Some of them prefer to do it on the computer. Some of them prefer to do it written. And some days they just say, hey, can I do it on the computer today? I'm just not feeling using my handwriting. That's fine. Go ahead and do it. All right, next up is cursive. Uh, we use the good and the beautiful. Um, I believe it's like year seven or something, but I was like, mm, we don't need to wait till seventh grade to start cursive. So I went ahead and got that book. Um, I just make copies for all of our kids, um, make a packet, and they know to do one page a day. So they're doing cursive as well here in fourth grade. They're also reading for 30 minutes. This is usually a book of their choice, um, but the format can come in different 
ways. So we have a library that we love. We often have a book from that library. We might have something from our own library, a physical book. Um, some favorites at this age are Geronimo Stilton, Thea Stilton, the Boxcar Children, um, the Magic Tree House is a little bit low for this age, but sometimes that's just fun. It's what they want to read. Um, we've also read Holes at this age. We've read um, the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. Um, little Women is a little high, but that's kind of where my fourth grader, current fourth grader wants to go next. We'll see if we get there. Um, but that said, there's a lot of choice in what they're reading. Um, I like to choose what I want to read. And so it's just one of those small, respectful things that I try to pass on to them just to encourage a love of reading. Um, this could also mean reading an ebook. We have access to Libby with our public library cards. Um, so our kids know that they can go on there and choose a book. They also have access to Epic libraries. There's a, as a homeschool, we created our school um, and we use Epic for that during school hours. So I believe it's like 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. is when that's available for free for school use um, after 3 p.m. You need a home license for that. So reading for 30 minutes and then they do a book report. Now, lower grades, I usually just have them write two sentences in second grade, three sentences in third grade about what they read. But in fourth grade, we usually have some sort of book study to go along with this. So there's kind of a theme worksheet or characterization or plot mountain or conflict or cause and effect. So all of those literary type things that we want them to kind of ease into at this age, those are the things that I hit with them. Nearpod and vocabulary are fantastic for this too. So if ever we have a great story that has like a hero's journey in it or something, I'll pull something from there. So having those tools at your fingertips is fantastic. All right. So after book report reading, um, we also do language arts during that time. Um, we have four kids in our family. And so there is never a day that is a carbon copy of the other. And um, so I never know who's going to be ready for language arts first, but we do use the good and the beautiful language arts for fourth grade. Um, it's a little bit more intense. This is like the more the first exposure to a more intense language arts uh, curriculum for them. They've got a writing and spelling workbook as well as the traditional course book, but there's writing, uh, there's geography, there's spelling, there's art appreciation included in there. So it's really cool um, to see them kind of blossom. And a lot of it is self-directed, um, but I usually start by saying, hey, let's do this these sections together. And then you can kind of uh, be set free and just check in with me when you're done. That's kind of what it looks like for our fourth graders. After that, um, they know that they need to get a piano lesson done. Um, at this age, they're pretty good at piano, I would say. So they can uh, do a play along with a song that they like. Uh, Christmas time. They love learning new Christmas songs. Um, a song that they heard in a movie, uh, sing a lot of great songs in that movie and they want to learn how to play it on piano. That's something that they need to do in the mornings. Uh, we just have a little kind of uh, old phone that we've given to the kids and they can just use that to get onto their piano lessons. We love Hoffman Academy, free piano lessons and a lot of really popular songs on there. Um, but there are a bunch on there. You can uh, set your kids up with channels uh, that they are safe to use and know how to navigate to. After that, um, once a week, we have French for 30 minutes for each kid. Uh, there have been times in our homeschool journey where we've had it twice a week for 30 minutes. Um, currently, it's only 30 once a week. And they have homework that they need to do after that. And that homework usually takes about 30 minutes. Our French teacher leaves that homework in a shared Google Doc that I created. And our kids can get that done and share it with him whenever they're ready. Uh, we also have a few choice activities, but they are still school related and they're still expected. Um, those are extramath.org, free math practice, math facts website. Um, for some kids, this is not necessary and it would be a kind of burden for them. Um, 
leave that to you, make that call. For some of our kids, we've seen that this extra practice really helps just with the quick uh, math fact recall in their math work, in their notebooks, in their workbooks. So um, that's something that they need to do. They also need to do Freckle. Um, again, free teacher account on there. I can assign things, but I mostly just have them work through fact practice. Um, some of the library, which has, um, if you remember, accelerated reader type quizzes for comprehension that sort of thing. So that's in there, uh, as well as TV Monde, which is like a French version of PBS here in the United States. Um, so it's like public television, but uh, this is where a lot of our science comes in. Uh, we don't explicitly teach science right now. Um, I've never felt the need to because our kids are curious and we have the opportunity to go look at things, go travel, go to a, a little field trips and stuff. Um, so this is kind of where they get the idea. Oh my gosh, look at this boa constrictor and this vet show. I want to learn about boa constrictors. Um, and so we'll kind of take off on these tangents and stuff. And so those holes, those gaps get filled. Um, and it's really cool to see them kind of take the lead there. Usually around this time, it's about lunchtime. Um, we eat together. My husband works from home as well. And so we do a little bit of uh, scripture memory. We have a little deck of scripture. Um, each kid goes through. The youngest is four. She'll repeat after me. Uh, the second youngest is six, and he'll read on his own. Um, and then our eight and 10-year-olds usually can pick it up by then. And so they'll challenge themselves. They'll close their eyes or have somebody else look at it. Um, and they'll try to recite it on their own, as well as my husband and I doing it. And we also read uh, the indescribable um, devotional. It's a science uh, kind of activity type thing. So the other day we were learning about like how our ears work, how our eyes work, skin cells, um, types of topography. Um, we have that in English and Spanish. And so we'll, we'll alternate whenever we finish a round of it, we'll shoot to the other one. That's by Louis Giglio. All right. After that, it's the afternoon. Our two youngest kiddos take a nap. The two older kiddos, this is kind of their free time. Um, so a lot of times this will be them on uh, the computer, um, doing something on Canva, doing, um, let's see, what else do they like to do? <laughs> uh, Nearpod lessons. They like to sometimes do uh, National Geographic Kids. They'll explore some of those topics that they found in other French videos, that sort of thing. Um, but they always set a timer. Um, they know to kind of nag each other. Hey, did you set a timer? Did you set a timer? They have 12 minutes to do that on the computer. And then the other one gets a turn. Um, this is when a lot of crafts happen, a lot of roller skating, a lot of um, outside building stuff. Um, we just have kind of an area where they're able to explore and you know, take stuff out of the storage room and um, kind of go crazy with it. So kind of fun. Um, they also love listening to audiobooks at this point. Um, again, each of them has 30 minutes to do that. Um, so they've got headphones that plug into that uh, extra phone that we kind of use for our school stuff. So a very uh, kind of chill free afternoon. But if something wasn't done in the morning, if one of their school activities wasn't done in the morning for some reason, we'll do it in the afternoon. This is also my work block. So I have made that afternoon not obligatory work. Um, I don't have classes scheduled, for example, um, but there's work that I need to get done. So if I need to push it back 10 minutes to be able to finish language arts that we didn't do earlier in the morning, I can do that. Again, flexibility, do what you need to do uh, with your schedule, but this is how it usually plays out for us. Um, a lot of times uh, recently, actually, our older kids, our fourth grader in particular, really likes baking. Um, and so she'll say, hey, mom, I found this recipe for apple crisp or whatever. Um, and so she'll go ahead and um, grab the ingredients, ask some questions. Hey, how, what's a double boiler? You know, these are the life skills that once they are um, kind of stove safe, <laughs> once they're oven safe, um, we can kind of set them free a little bit, um, but that takes some work in the earlier years. So um, stay tuned for second and third grade. Uh, but the idea here is that they are safe to uh, kind of explore the kitchen a little bit more. It doesn't always turn out perfectly or edible or how they wanted it to, um, but those experiences are helpful. Uh, in the afternoon, we usually have karate or a sport. Um, and so that happens for about an hour and a half. And then we'll come home, uh, we'll get some dinner and uh, move into kind of a bedtime routine. Again, with four kids, uh, we kind of 
uh, do a little bit of a carousel uh, with all of them. So they know that they need to do ukulele. They need to do piano, uh, both for about 15 minutes. There's play-alongs or lessons on Hoffman Academy or YouTube play-alongs for ukulele. Um, and one of our kids loves, our, our fourth grader in particular, loves playing guitar. So she'll also throw in guitar. That was of her own choosing, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, finally, we close out the night with Bible reading in Spanish. Uh, they read a proverb a day. If you don't know, there are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs in the Bible. And so there's one for every day. And so they know that if today is the ninth, they will read Proverbs 9. Uh, their kids' Bibles are in Spanish, but they have access to other Bibles in English if they like, which sometimes they do. Uh, so it's kind of fun to see them, um, uh, change preferences every once in a while. Um, but that's something that they do in the evening. Then we pray together and go to sleep. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, it's definitely something that took us up to this point to kind of change and find what works. Uh, and I'm sure it'll change in the next six months. <laughs> but for now, that's what we do for fourth grade. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the description in the comments. Um, I'd be happy to answer them. I'll also link as much as I can in terms of things that I've mentioned, devotionals, curriculums, uh, YouTube channels, that sort of thing. Uh, but I am happy that you're here. And if nobody's told you yet today, homeschooling parent, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. It's really important. Happy teaching. Thank you.